So how will all of this translate to more specific foreign policy decisions by the Biden-Harris administration? Will Biden choose continuity with some of Trump's foreign policy decisions, or will he seek a clean break and reversal? I'm joined by Trita Parsi, the executive vice president at the Quincy Institute for Responsible Statecraft. Trita Parsi, good to have you with us. Just how badly damaged do you think is America's global brand today? Do you agree with Ambassador Shannon that it may take a little bit of time, but that the United States under Biden is on the right path? Can, can the U.S. still claim to be a beacon of democracy? It certainly will take some time to be able to rebuild the trust and the confidence that the United States oftentimes has enjoyed on the international stage. But I think a return to the past is not the pathway to be able to rebuild that trust. Because the Trump phenomenon is not just Trump himself, uh, and it was not born out of nowhere. I think there's been um, a period of time in which the American public themselves have lost confidence in American foreign policy have turned against the idea that the United States makes itself and the world more secure by dominating the globe militarily, who do not believe that the United States should play the role of the world policeman, who have seen that those type of instincts have led to endless wars, many wars that actually were not only built on lies, but also the staying power of those wars, that the constant uh, convincing of the public that the war needed to be continued was also built on lies. All of those different things, I think, help bring about a moment in which someone like Donald Trump could come to office. And just because he has left office doesn't mean that those sentiments in the public have uh, vanished. I think there still is a very strong um, a body of uh, the public that doesn't want to see that type of foreign policy. In fact, if you take a look at almost all of the Democratic candidates in the primary, they all were talking about ending these endless wars. So I think the best path for uh, Biden to be able to rebuild that trust is to also redefine America's position in the world and move towards uh, coexistence and, and security through collaboration rather than uh, a security based on dominance. And this is going to be particularly important if we're going to have a chance to be able to address issues such as climate change and pandemics that require a tremendous amount of international co collaboration something that is undermined if we at the same time are trying to dominate the globe as a whole. But do you see, do you think that we will see a less interventionist foreign policy than we did see under the Obama first and second terms? We know that the, the person whom Biden has tapped as his secretary of, of state isn't someone who or, or, or is rather someone who, who believes in interventionism and did in the case of Libya and Syria. Are we going to see less, um, a less assertive, less aggressive U.S. foreign policy under Biden-Harris administration, less hubris, less arrogance, and a realignment of certain um, alliances? What will we see um, um, in terms of um, relationship with the Gulf states, uh, the, the Saudi Arabia, the UAE, Israel? Iran, do you, do you think that we will see a rapprochement now that Biden has been sworn in? Well, I, I certainly believe that there is a decent chance that there will be less interventionism. It's true that some of the key people in the administration uh, were in favor of the Libya intervention, uh, argued for more intervention in Syria, for instance. But you also have other individuals who have written books about how problematic all of these different regime change uh, efforts have been and how they almost never have worked. And those people are also in this administration. I think there are signs that there's been a bit of a learning curve and there's at a minimum a realization that the political cost domestically for moving uh, further into an interventionist foreign policy is much, much higher than it was before. When it comes to Iran and the GCC states, I think it will be quite fascinating to see how the Biden administration will deal with Saudi Arabia, for instance. Uh, during the campaign, he did say that he wanted to make Saudi Arabia known to be the pariah that it is, which would mark a rather stark shift. Whether he will act on that uh, in that stark manner remains to be seen. But I think there is a fatigue with some of these states in the Middle East who have used their alliance or their strategic partnership with the United States to drag the United States into more, more rather than less conflict. And I, I think it, it would be a much welcome shift from the U.S. side 
and one that also, again, requires to have a different approach to the Persian Gulf, meaning that the idea that the United States needs to dominate the Persian Gulf, again, uh, has proven itself not to be true. It's not made America more safe, and it certainly has not made the region more safe, but it has led to the United States getting unnecessarily entangled in the rivalries of its strategic partners. Certainly a lot of expectations. We shall see what a Biden foreign policy looks like in the next few days and months ahead. Trita Parsi, good to have you with us. Thank you so much for joining me.